Hi everyone, welcome to the 8th episode. In this episode, we are going to learn permutation. This is going to be very simple if you know the 4 steps that we discussed in the episode number 6. Okay. Before we deep dive into it, I just want to point out a small thing. You guys are helping me stay motivated all the time because of your comments. So I am thinking of giving some giveaways. So I will shortlist the names for those who are regularly commenting on all the videos. I will try to shortlist those people and arrange some giveaways for them very soon. Okay. Now we can start with permutations. Now what actually is permutation? I know you have studied about it in school, but let me again recall it. So let's say we have few elements and the different ways in which we can arrange these elements is called permutation. For example, let's keep these three elements here. First element is a triangle, then we have a circle, then we have a square. These are the three elements, three different elements. In how many ways can we arrange these elements? Okay. So to arrange them, we will have three positions, position zero, position one and position two. Okay. Now let us try to keep these elements one by one to all of these positions. This is one of the possible arrangement. What could be the other possible arrangement? So instead of uh, this, we can have this as an arrangement, right? And again, we can put the triangle at the uh, 12th position and circle at the 0th position. This is again a permutation. Okay, so different ways of arranging these elements is called permutation. All right. Now, how many permutations can I have for these three different elements? The answer is three factorial. How is it three factorial? I know many of you know that it is three factorial, but let me try to give you some visual representation of it. So I have three elements and I have three places to keep these elements. What all can I keep at the zeroth index or the zeroth position? I have three options for that. I can pick either of these three options and I can put it at the zeroth place. Okay. So for the zeroth place, I have three options. Now, one of these options will be kept at the zeroth place. Two elements are now remaining and we are talking about the position one. Two elements are remaining, two positions are remaining. How many options do I have now? I have two options. Now talking about the position two. One element is remaining, one position is remaining. How many options do I have? One. Only one element is left, so I will have to keep that element at this place, right? So three into two into one, total six, which is three factorial number of permutations are there. Okay, I hope it makes sense. Now let us try to solve this problem, all right? So we have three elements and three places. I have to arrange these three elements in these three places. So for the first position, for this position, I have three possible options. One option is to keep a circle there. Other option is don't keep a circle, keep a square. Other option is don't keep a square, keep a triangle. These are the three options. Okay. And after selecting one of these options, what can I say? I can say, okay, let's say if I'm selecting a circle for the zeroth position, I will ask recursion to do the remaining task to arrange the remaining two elements in the remaining two positions, right? Okay. So initially my position was this and basically I was doing the task to put all the elements one by one at the position zero. Okay. So let's say I kept circle at the position zero. Now I have a triangle and a square remaining and I have two places remaining and I will ask recursion. Okay. Recursion do this remaining task from the position one do this remaining task. All right. Okay. Uh, next time what I will do next time I will say, okay, keep this circle, give me the triangle and now do the remaining task. And the next time I will say, give me the square, keep the triangle and now do the remaining task. So I will have three possible options because there are three elements. I will have these three possible options. Okay. And I will try to pick all of these options one by one at this position okay at this position i will try to keep all of these options one by one and i will ask recursion to do the remaining task okay so this is how i'm going to solve this problem recursively if you haven't watched the previous lectures make sure that you watch because everything is correlated all right so the small task that i'm doing the step number two is to do the small task the small task which i'm doing is to keep all the elements one by one at the current position at the current position, keep all the remaining elements one by one. Okay, all the remaining elements. These are the remaining elements as of now. In future, the remaining elements will reduce and then it will keep reducing one by one. So out of all the elements which are left, bring them individually to this position, keep them here and then ask recursion to do the remaining task. All right. So the problem will be given like this. So you will be given an initial uh, arrangement. Let me make an initial arrangement. Maybe this 
is here this is over here this is over here this is what you will be given and now you will be asked to give the return all the possible permutation of this and how are you going to do this so uh, what you will do is uh, you will basically start from this position and you will say okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select all of these elements one by one and keep them at this position and i will ask recursion to do the same for the remaining part okay i will ask recursion to permute the remaining part from the position one all right that's what i'm going to do so how are you going to place one, uh, all these elements one by one at the position zero circle is already placed there so don't worry about that then talking about this square bring it over here you want to bring it over here and where will you send the circle where will you throw this circle circle will be thrown to this position basically they are going to swap they are going to swap each other okay so i ended up bringing the square at this position and sending the circle at this position okay next time uh, next time I want to bring the triangle at the zeroth position, right? I want to bring the triangle at the zeroth position. So again, I'm going, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring the triangle here and I'm going to send the circle over here. This is what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. Now let us go to the coding part, start coding it. And then I will explain you while coding. So here we are given the string instead of, instead of those diagrams, you are given a string. Now you have to arrange this string in different permutations. Right? And you have to store all those permutations in a vector of string as the answer. So let me create a void per function here. And what I need is I need a position for sure. Uh, then I need a string str. Okay. And let's do the first thing. First thing was do the small task. What's the small task? Small task is to bring all the remaining elements one by one to the current position, to this position, POS. Bring all these elements one by one. Okay. So all the remaining elements, I'm, I'm iterating, I'm iterating, basically running a for loop on all the remaining elements. So int i is equal to position, i is smaller than str dot size, these are the remaining elements. i plus plus, I'm going to all of the remaining elements one by one, and I want to bring that remaining element onto the position, okay, onto the position. And send whatever is there on the position, I need to send it to that place. So basically I want to swap swap str of i comma str of position swap them okay then swapping so basically i uh, i am bringing the ith element to the position and now i will ask recursion to do the remaining task i will ask okay recursion go and do the permutation from position plus one till the end from position plus one till the end do the remaining task okay now recursion will do the remaining task that's it i'm done but then I made a change here. What's the change which I made? I basically swapped something. So I need to swap it back. Okay, I need to swap it back. Whatever disorder I have created, I have to undo that. Okay, this is called the backtracking step. We have already seen this in the previous videos. If you haven't watched them, make sure that you do. This is called the backtracking step. Okay, whatever dust you are creating, you have to clean that dust before going to the next iteration. Okay, before going to the next iteration, you have to clean that dust. All right, so back tracking. All right, so if you are swapping i with position, undo that swap. Okay, what is the significance of it? Let us go to the board and try to see what's the significance of it. So here, let us say I want to bring the square at the zeroth position. So for that, I will have to swap it. Okay, bring the square to the zeroth position, sending the circle to the first position. Done. Now I have to undo this step. Basically, I have to bring back the circle to the zeroth position and send the square here back again so that I get the original string. So that I get the original string. Now, when I want to bring the triangle here, I can swap zero, sorry, circle with the triangle. Right? That's why I have to keep cleaning it. I have to keep cleaning. All right. So that's why we need this undo step over here. And in every question, whenever you are making a change, you have to undo that change. All right. This is called the backtracking step. Uh, we are done with this. So to summarize, what I'm doing is I'm bringing all the elements one by one to position and I'm asking recursion to do the remaining task. When recursion is done, I am basically cleaning up. I'm basically cleaning up. This is the cleaning step. Okay, done. Now, the base condition. What should be the base condition? The base condition is when this position exceeds the limit, position is greater than or equal to str dot size in this case. In this case, I'm basically done permuting str and I can save this str in an answer. 
so answer will be a vector of string right answer dot push back str okay and let me create an answer over here vector of string answer and i'm sending answer over here vector of string answer i think we are done with this huh, just in this function call i need to add answer and i have to call this function perm from here passing the position as zero initially then str and then answer finally i need to return the answer okay all right so this is how we generate all the possible permutations right and we are getting a wrong answer because our arrangement is not correct okay we are able to generate all the possible permutations absolutely fine this is the correct way to generate all the possible permutations absolutely correct but they are asking us to return the answer in a sorted form so i'm just sorting the answer before i return it just sort it sort answer dot begin it is the demand of the question only okay nothing to do with permutations at all basically you have understood permutations perfectly so answer dot end done sorting is done let me also add the header for sorting hash hash include bits slash scdc plus plus dot h this is the general header then let us submit this done so we are done solving this question this is how we permute there are basic steps very simple steps do the small task what's the small task the small task is to bring every element which is remaining to position bring every element okay how you can bring it by swapping it okay by swapping the ith element with the position you can bring all the elements to position after bringing all the elements to position individually one by one ask recursion to do the remaining task okay so i am bringing circle to the position zero asking recursion to do the remaining task i am bringing triangle to the position zero asking recursion to do the remaining task i am bringing square to the position zero and asking recursion to do the remaining task that's what i am doing okay but after creating a change in str i have to undo that change as well remember that undo that change you don't have to leave things disturbed undo the change cleaning okay cleaning is very important that's why this swap is required that's it this is very simple question of recursion in the future uh, episode we will see that how we can uh, basically permute without having duplicates okay without having duplicates all right this is also the homework question for you try to find the question permutations two okay permutations two and I, I will also provide the link in the description you can go to the problem try to solve the homework problem by yourself if you're not able to solve it i will solve it in the next video okay uh, let me also draw the draw the recursion tree for the same so that you can understand it better so let us take the example of abc i'm taking the example of abc this is the string which we have initially the position will be equal to zero okay and uh, yeah i'll start doing the changes so at the zeroth position i have to bring every element okay i have to bring every element first of all i'm bringing a to the zeroth position which is already there okay don't worry about it which is already there bringing a to the zeroth position this is fixed p is now equal to one b is left c is left oops yeah now bringing b to the zeroth position if you if i want to bring b to the zeroth position a will go to the oneth position okay b and a are going to swap so b will come here it is fixed a will go here c will go here then what else if i want to bring c to the zeroth position a will go to c's position a and c will swap so c will come here it is fixed b and a okay now let us go deep dive into this particular node so here p is equal to 2 p is equal to 2 here now i'm talking about the position number one i'm talking about the position number one so at position one i can basically have a b okay so a is here b is here a b fixed c is remaining okay or i can have c okay these are the remaining elements right these are the remaining remaining elements a is already fixed i'm just talking about b and c i can have either b or i can have c at the position one right so here i'm keeping b and here i'm keeping c a a and c fixed b okay now talking about this so these are the remaining elements b was already fixed b is going to be here now out of a and c let us first keep a 
fixed, C is remaining. B was already fixed, let us fix C, A is remaining. Okay, now here. Here, C is already fixed, A and B were remaining there. I am keeping B, then A. B is fixed, A. Then C, is, C was already fixed, then I can fix A here, then B is remaining. Okay. So this is actually equal to 2, p is equal to 2 and when do we have to stop when p is greater than or equal to the size when p is equal to 3. So uh, let us go once more into this and just talking about the position 2 now. So for the position 2 there is only one possibility that is c. For the position 2 there is only one possibility that is c. So there are no options. So a was already fixed, b was already fixed, now c is also fixed. Now for the position 2 only b is the only possibility. A and c were already fixed. A is fixed, a was fixed, c was fixed, now fixing b. Here also only C was remaining, A and B and A were fixed, the B was fixed, A was fixed, C is now fixed. For this B was fixed, C was fixed, A is now fixed. C was fixed, B was fixed, now A is fixed. C was fixed, A was fixed, now B is fixed. Okay, here P is equal to 3. Now this is the base condition, P is equal to 3 was the base condition, the size of the string str. Okay, and these are the possible permutations and I am saving them in the answer. Okay. Now, analyzing the space complexity in the time complexity, space complexity, I want you guys to analyze what will be the space complexity. Uh, forget uh, that we are storing all the possible permutations, forget about it. Okay, just tell me the complexity in terms of the recursion stack. So, what will be the space complexity? Forget about the answer that we are creating. We are creating an answer, right? That answer is a vector of string. Forget that space. Just tell me what will be the space complexity required here. And you know the space complexity is equal to the height of the tree. Okay. I am talking about the time complexity now. So the time complexity will be to generate all the possible permutations. You know that there are n factorial permutations. So n factorial will be the time complexity, but each of that permutation is also of size n. So n into n factorial will be the time complexity, but they also ask us to basically sort it and return the answer. That was an additional thing which is not required usually, but if they want us to sort, so the complexity will be n log n, n log n, or uh, this is the sorting complexity where this n is equal to this thing okay so this is the time complexity which is required now you guys tell me what is the space complexity which is required and do let me know if you are able to understand this lecture if so uh, give me nice comments if not so do let me know i can create this lecture again maybe take the take a doubt session live session for this particular topic okay let us meet in the next episode bye bye